let's start the class so good evening all of you last day we started with time value of money right and uh, today is our second class and the first class has already been uh, updated in youtube as well as in the player uh, it will be updated maximum by today and uh, you all are batch 2 all english batch okay so your videos will be updated in a separate folder okay and you will also be having access to batch 1 classes as well okay let's start with a revision question let's start with a revision question so at time 0 this is 182 day treasury bill the price here is 96.50 and here at some date d it is sold for 98 okay this is investor 1 this is investor 2 rate of return received by the initial purchaser was 4% per annum effective okay so for how much time did investor 1 hold the bill 96.50 One point zero four to the power t by three sixty five is ninety eight. Please solve for t. Please solve for t. You all have got the calculator. Jao le kya? Where is your calculator? Jao le kya? Anyone else who has not got the calculator raise your hand why to kal aur parso ka class kaise karoge fir the price here is 96.5 the price here is 98 and the price here is 100 okay so this is the holding period for investor 1 this is the holding period for investor 2 and it has been given in the question this is institute material question time value of money back question question number 6 institute material back question question number 6 What is the value of T? One forty-three point five four. So basically, the initial investor held the bill for one forty-four days. All of you, please check out institute material. It's there in Q forum. No problem. I am dictating the question. It's very simple. the bill is 182 day treasury bill okay redeemable at 100 at the time of issue the price was 96.50 okay this is a very 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 important question for you all in the exam this is a very important question which can turn up in your exam okay yes i am repeating the question so the question is At time zero, the price is ninety six point five, one eighty two day treasury bill, redemption is hundred, and in between, investor one sold it at D for ninety eight. So the purchase price for investor one is ninety six point five, and the selling price for investor one is ninety eight. Is it clear? 
the purchase price for investor 2 is what 98 and the purchase price for investor sorry and the selling price for investor 2 is 100 okay so this is the purchase price you accumulate it and this is the selling price so what is t 144 days okay so this is the holding period so what is the holding period for investor 2 investor 2 holding period 182 less 144 what is the answer 38 No, no, he earned a return of 4%. Nah? There is no concept of profit and loss here. He earned interest of 4% over the full holding period. That is only his earning nah? because he invested 96.5. He got 98 after 144 days. So the return is 4% on his investment. In business, you invest capital and you get some profit. So if you calculate, you, you invested 500 crores and you got 5 crores as profit. So what is your percentage? 1%? Yes. Is it okay? So now the next question is, what is the simple rate of return achieved by investor 2? Simple rate of return. So for calculating simple rate of return, what we are going to do is, 98 1 plus 38 by 365 into i which is the simple rate is what 100 because 100 is the selling price for invested 2 and 98 is the purchase price for invested 2 okay so calculate i again they are asking what is the effective rate of return achieved by invested 2 so it is 98 1 plus i to the power 38 by 365 is what 100 I am just basically repeating the question again so it's a very very important question on treasury bill so basically the government has issued a treasury bill the purchase price of the treasury bill for investor one is 96.5 the redemption is after 182 days at 100 okay and it is changing hands between two investors in between those 182 day time period investor one is selling to investor two this treasury bill for how much 98 and investor two is purchasing this for 98 and selling for 100 is it clear to all of you yes or no okay is it clear So what's the simple rate of return? 0 0.1960. 0 .1960. What is the uh, uh, compound return? 0 0.21415. 0 0.21415. Is it okay? Now see the point is we have got a lot of uh, interest outside India and South India. So the main concept of doing this batch is to help those students. But if you're not uh, basically uh, comfortable with the language, you all can watch the recorded lectures as well. And you can attend these classes as a revision lectures. Okay. Because in this there will be no time pass only to the point concept and most important questions asked in the exam. Okay. So this is from exam point of view, exam oriented batch. Okay, and you will see the duration also very less. And even in uh, the batch one, I gave few recordings, but in this, you will not see I am giving any recording because this is 100% live batch for paper A. Though we did not mention it in our uh, poster because we don't wanted any kind of uh, trust between students and us. So we'll give you more live classes than what we mentioned in the uh, thing, okay? So the approx hours will be 110, 120. Okay, so approximately. <coughs> Now, 
this one present value into 1 plus i to the power n is accumulated value compound interest so this is basically compound interest this is simple interest yeah basically they are asking how much simple return did, the, did he earn how much compound return did he earn okay and all your task is i'll give you homework with time so see our first focus in this batch is not revision notes of ifoa or indian institute which is the past papers basically our first task in this batch is to complete the institute material in total okay so there is a theory chapter which has been done by shivangi ma'am i will give you the recording it's already there in uh, batch 1 recording but i will give it here also that we that we gave recording to batch 1 students as well it's just a 1 hour video okay theory chapter you need to do it on yourself go through the mat read it and there is also a video okay you watch that and it's done so we start the thing with uh, cash flows and time value of money so you remember last day i gave you a cash flow structure of a bond so let us take one more cash flow structure let us take one more cash flow structure so for example for example you invest in some business you invest in some business okay and in business you invested 50 crores and uh, this is time 0 at time 1 maybe you are getting 10 crores and at time 2 you are getting 10 crores you are going to get consistently 10 crores for the next 10 years for the next 10 years this is also kind of cash flow structure at time 10 the business will have no value left okay at time 10 the business will have no value left so this is a cash flow structure there is not much to do in cash flow models so this is how you plot a timeline at below you are having the time and above this you are having all the cash flows so something which is an outflow for you is negative something which is an inflow for you is positive we did all the things for time value of money some of the major uh, recap from time value of money is that uh, we started with present value is what 1 plus ni times accumulated value again we did present value 1 plus i to the power n is accumulated value again we did accumulated value 1 minus nd is present value accumulated value 1 minus d to the power n is present value we learned principle of consistency we did accumulation factor notation for accumulation factor is a 0 to n notation for discount factor is v 0 to n one year discount factor is v two year to v square and n years v to the power n is it okay this all things we did and what was the formula for d what was the formula for d d was i by 1 plus i what is v v is 1 by 1 plus i okay so this thing we did now your homework i will tell your homework for today is to do all back question all back question of time value of money okay so this thing is not going to change all back question of time value of money with time the chapter numbers may change uh, some of little bit but this is this will not change you need to do all the back question of tvm and tomorrow there is a class same time i am going to take doubts for time value of money okay i did question number 6 there is five question more in this uh, topic so you need to do all these okay now next put the heading interest rates now next put the heading interest rates now next put the heading interest rates <coughs> now what today's topic will be interest rates and force of interest okay be very attentive we will do quality studies 1 hour and 20 minutes from now okay so in interest rates whenever you go to a bank it's not that you get a product only of one year maybe 6 months maybe 3 uh, months maybe 15 days uh, you get products of varied duration okay and with the change in time to redemption basically if your investment is of 15 days if it's of 10 days if it's an overnight investment 
if it's an investment of uh, with a minimum lock in of 3 years the rate of interest also changes right so today's task is if you are given a rate of maybe 1 year interest rate of 1 year you should know how to convert this annual effective interest rate to any time period interest rate or any time period discount rate okay that is interest rates conversion we are going to study because whenever we are making banking products finance products we should know how to convert a particular time period interest rate or a discount rate to a particular time period interest rate or a discount rate okay so let's take the example this is example number one you all will uh, type uh, copy with me let's take the example of SBI bank okay so what SBI bank does you invest 100 at the rate 6 percent after one year the branches will be 106 after two years it will be 106 6 and 6 into 0 0.06 okay let's take the next example you take the example of Axis Bank now Axis Bank pays half yearly interest at the rate 3 percent half yearly interest at the rate 3 percent so in one year how many times compounding is being done two times so you invest 100 you get 103 you get 103 you get 3 3 into 0 0.03 so what is the total what is the total 106.09 after one year right but there what was the total 100 and 106 so today we learned today we learned what do we learn today we learned that 3% half year is not equal to 6% yearly yes or no today we learned 3% per half year is more is something more why more because there are there is compounding happening two times if it's 3% per half year the factor for one half year is what if it's 3% if it's 3% per half year what is the factor for one half year one half year factor by factor I mean accumulation factor 1.03 you invest 1 rupees today you get 1 rupees and 3 pesa after 6 months what is 2 half years factor 1.03 square 3 half years factor 1.03 to the power 3 and so on right so basically the factor for 2 half years is equal to 1 year factor 1 year factor what is the total 1.03 square calculate 1.03 square uh, Krisha Sony you are you, mistaken it will not come to 0 0.9241 previous question previous question just I am deviating with the topic this was only the answer right 0.21 yeah so what you can do is you can take 98 there then you can take log on both sides. You know how to calculate this? So, 3 half years factor is 1.03 cube and so on, right? Now, so, if you see, 1.03 square is what? 1.0609, which is not equal to 1.06. So 3% half year is equal to 6.09% yearly. Effective. Effective because 3% we are getting two times. So if we invest 100, it is becoming 1.03 after six months, and then we are getting 3% interest on 100 or 103. 103 is it okay to all of you yes or no okay so in actuaries we have lot of notations we have lot of notations so first we are going to do the notations what is i annual effective and from today whenever the word simple is not mentioned we will always assume compound interest we will always assume compound interest annual effective rate of interest okay what is i2 by 2 it's a notation it's not i square it is i 
टू ब्रैकेट डिवाइड बाय टू इट इज हाफ ईयरली एफेक्टिव रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट सो इन आवर प्रीवियस क्वेश्चन दिस वॉज थ्री परसेंट वट इज आई फोर बाय फोर यू डिवाइड द इयर यू डिवाइड द इयर इन टू फोर पार्ट यू डिवाइड द इयर इन टू फोर पार्ट यू गेट थ्री मंथ विच इज वन क्वार्टर सो इट इज क्वार्टरली सो इट इज क्वार्टरली effective rate of interest okay i12 i12 by 12 so it is what monthly monthly effective rate of interest monthly effective rate of interest okay so i is annual effective rate of interest i2 by 2 is half yearly effective rate of interest i4 by 4 is quarterly effective rate of interest i12 by 12 is monthly effective rate of interest okay copy it down done similarly d is annual effective rate of discount d2 by 2 is half yearly effective rate of discount d4 by 4 is quarterly effective rate of discount and so on okay first copy the notation yes weekly effective rate of interest yes i52 by 52 weekly effective rate of interest so now i2 by 2 half yearly effective rate of interest it was 3% so i2 is what 6% please write down the meaning annually approximately we are getting 6% half yearly effective we are getting 3% half yearly half yearly effective we are getting 3% these are wait 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 so i2 is 6% okay annually approximately we are getting 6% half yearly effective we are getting 3% full stop write down i will not write write down annually annually effective annually effective we are getting annually effective we are getting annually effective we are getting 6.09% annually effective we are getting annually effective we are getting 6.09% okay now write down 
आईपी नॉमिनल रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट नॉमिनल रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट राइट डाउन दीज आर दीज आर एनवलाइज रेट्स ऑफ इंटरेस्ट दीज आर एनवलाइज रेट्स ऑफ इंटरेस्ट दीज आर एनवलाइज रेट्स ऑफ इंटरेस्ट दे आर ऑल्सो नोन एज कन्वर्टिबल्स दे आर ऑल्सो नोन एज कन्वर्टिबल्स दे आर ऑल्सो नोन एज कन्वर्टिबल्स एज दे कैन बी इजिली कन्वर्टेड इन टू एज दे कैन बी इजिली कन्वर्टेड इन टू effective rates of interest as they can be easily converted into effective rates of interest so i4 is 8% equal to nominal rate of interest nominal rate of interest convertible quarterly so quarterly effective rate is what i4 by 4 which is 2% so quarterly effective we are getting 2% annually approximately we are getting 8% so what is the factor for one quarter 1.02 two quarters to the power 2 three quarters to the power 3 four quarters to the power so this is the factor for one year so this can be equated with 1 plus i because 1 plus i is the factor for one year calculate i 1.02 to the power 4 minus 1 Zero point zero eight two four. Copy it down. Copy it down. Done. Yes. No. Next example. I two is ten percent. This means what? Half yearly effective we are getting. Five percent. So, what is the factor for one half year? What is the factor for two half years? What is the annual factor? Solve. ओके हम्म डन नो द फॉर्मूला फॉर कन्वर्जन इज वन प्लस आई is 1 plus ip by p whole to the power p so what we are equating one year accumulation factor with one year accumulation factor so let's say suppose i is 6% you need to calculate i2 okay 
सो हाउ टू सॉल्व दिस वन पॉइंट जीरो सिक्स इज वॉट वन प्लस आई टू बाई टू स्क्वेर सो वन पॉइंट जीरो सिक्स टू दी पावर हाफ माइनस वन होल इन टू टू इज वॉट आई टू सॉल्व सॉल्व सो वॉट इज आई टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव नाइन वन टू क्लियर वे आर इक्वेटिंग वन ईयर अक्यूमुलेशन फैक्टर विद वन ईयर अक्यूमुलेशन फैक्टर डन द सेम थिंग कैन बी डन विद डिस्काउंटिंग ऑल्सो वन माइनस डी इज वन माइनस डी पी बाई पी होल टू दी पावर पी सो लेट्स सपोज D4 is 10 percent. You need to calculate D. So, one minus D4 by four. What is this? This is a factor for discount. This is discounting factor for one quarter to the power four one year, which is equal to one minus D. So, one minus 0.1 by four whole to the power four is what? One minus D. So. One minus zero point zero two five to the power four is what? One minus d. So d is what? One minus zero point nine seven five to the power four. Solve this. All of your understanding in online? Yes, no. Please type. Please type. What's the answer? Point zero nine. Done. Now, for example, you are given I four, eight percent. You need to calculate I two. So. What is one plus i four by four? Try to decode this. Let's try to decode this. I four by four is what? I four by four is quarterly effective interest rate. I four is nominal rate of interest convertible quarterly. These can be easily converted into effective rates of interest. So we divide I four by four. We get quarterly effective. Interest rate one plus quarterly effective interest rate is the factor accumulation factor for one quarter. Accumulation factor for one quarter. Now to the power four is what accumulation factor for one year. What is I two by two? Half yearly interest rate one plus half yearly effective interest rate is accumulation factor for one half year. To the power two is what? Huh? No. First, understand. This is what one year accumulation factor. One year accumulation factor. Now put the value of I four. So one plus zero point zero eight by four to the power four is one plus I two by two square. So one point zero two to the power four. To the power four by two minus one whole into two is I two. Solve for I two and tell me the answer. Done. Now the most general form. Most general form is one plus I P by P whole to the power P 
इज वन बाय वन माइनस डी पी बाय पी होल टू दावर पी दिस इज द मोस्ट जनरल फॉर्म एंड बोथ द पी इज नॉट नेली सेम हेयर वी आर इक्वेटिंग वन ईयर अक्यूमुलेशन फैक्टर वन बाय वन ईयर डिस्काउंटिंग फैक्टर सो वी कैन राइट इट लाइक दिस वन प्लस आई फोर बाय फोर होल टू दावर फोर इज वन बाय वन माइनस डी टू बाय टू स्क्वेर वट इज दिस दिस इज वन ईयर अक्यूमुलेशन फैक्टर दिस इज वन ईयर डिस्काउंटिंग फैक्टर वन बाय वन ईयर डिस्काउंटिंग फैक्टर इज वॉट वन ईयर अक्यूमुलेशन फैक्टर सो लेट से सपोज डी टू इज टेन परसेंट सॉल्व फॉर आई फोर डी टू इज टेन परसेंट सॉल्व फॉर आई फोर so 1 minus 0.1 by 2 square okay is 1 by 1 plus i4 by 4 whole to the power 4 so 1 by 0.95 Zero point nine five square is what one plus i four by four whole to the power four. Okay, yes or no? So one plus i four by four is what? 0.95 पॉइंट नाइन फाइव टू दी पावर माइनस टू बाय फोर सो वन माइनस जीरो पॉइंट नाइन फाइव टू दी पावर माइनस टू बाय फोर वन माइनस जीरो पॉइंट नाइन फाइव टू दी पावर माइनस टू बाय फोर होल इन टू फोर is i4 done so now if we are given any period interest rate we can convert it to any period interest rate or discount rate i12 is 9% per annum what does this mean nominal rate of interest convertible monthly right i12 by 12 is what ha huh? 9 by 12 percent which is 0.75 percent per month so this is monthly effective rate of interest monthly effective rate of interest okay so what is this this is known as convertibles because these can be easily converted into effective rates of interest what is one month factor 1.00 1.0075 
फैक्टर फॉर ट्वेल्व मंथ्स माइनस वन इज वॉट आई एनुअल इंटरेस्ट रेट सॉल्व सॉल्व पॉइंट जीरो नाइन थ्री एट जीरो इंटरेस्ट रेट्स मैट बैक क्वेश्चन एग्जाम स्टाइल क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री सो व्हाट दे आर गिवन इज यू नीड टू कैलकुलेट आई दे हैव गिवन नॉमिनल रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट ऑफ इलेवन परसेंट पर एन कन्वर्टेबल हाफ ईयरली so nominal rate of interest convertible half yearly is what nominal rate of interest convertible half yearly i2 i2 they have given i2 they have given as 11% you need to calculate i nominal rate of interest 12% convertible monthly convertible monthly means i12 it is given as 12% same you need to calculate now you need to calculate rate of interest convertible monthly what do you need to calculate rate of interest convertible monthly i12 you need to calculate you are given you are given effective interest rate effective interest rate is i 0.142 okay again nominal rate of interest 11% convertible three times a year convertible three times means you have divided the year into three parts 12 divided by 3 is 4 months you have 3 4 months 4 3 months 3 months is quarter 4 months is nothing if you divide the year into 4 parts you get 1 quarter or 3 months you divide the year into 3 parts you get 4 months okay so they have given they have given nominal rate of interest convertible 3 times so nominal rate of interest convertible 3 times is what i3 is what I three they have given eleven percent which is zero point one one. So here I have given in percentage. Here I have given in decimals. Okay, you need to solve this question. Solve this and take a break of two minutes.
all of you should watch calculator how to use calculator videos now there is one uh, part which i am showing so in today's class it was 98 1 plus i to the power 38 by 365 is 100 right so first of all 1 plus i to the power 38 by 365 is what 100 by 98 so now we are taking log on both sides so 38 by 365 ln 1 plus i is what ln oh no we don't need to take log wait 100 by 98 to the power 365 by 38 minus 1 is i this is not in uh, basically power this is minus 1 is i okay Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So now coming back to this question. So I'm just making the expressions. So one plus i is one plus i two by two square. One plus i is one plus i twelve by 12 whole to the power 12 so this is uh, 1 plus i again the same equation 1 plus i 12 by 12 whole to the power 12 1 plus i 3 by 3 whole to the power 3 is 1 plus i 12 by 12 whole to the power 12 So what are the answers? Tell me 1 to 4, yes. 0 point? 1130 2 Then? 1 2 6 8 2 5 Then? 1 3 1 5 1 Then? 1 0 8 Five one nine zero. All of you are getting the same answer? Okay. One more thing is that A zero to one can be broken down as A. 0 to 0 0.25 into a 0 0.25 to 0 0.5 if I'm breaking it down into quarters a 0 0.5 0 0.75 into a 0 0.751 clear again a 0 to 1 can be broken down as a 0 to 0 0.5 clear into into a 0 0.5 to 1 if you want to break it into years a 0 to 1 by 12 then 1 by 12 to 2 by 12 and so on is it okay copy this you need to understand only one basic thing that in the whole of cm1 either there is a sum of money present today which you need to accumulate to the future or there is a sum of money present in the future which you need to discount and pull it back to the present. That's it. Factor should be very clear. Factor should be very clear. If the interest rate is 0.75% per month, factor is 1.0075 per month. Two months factor 1.0075 square. Four months 1.0075 to the power four. You should be very strong with the factor. You go f into the future, you multiply, you pull it back to the present, you divide. Okay, done. Next, put the heading force of interest. Force of interest. Force of interest.
when interest is paid continuously please write down when interest is paid continuously when interest is paid continuously shreyasi can you please solve the last one yes sure so last one is this what we got i31 right so 1 plus i12 by 12 whole to the power 12 is 1 plus i3 by 3 to the power 3 so what is i3 what is i3 0.11 right so 0.11 0.11 okay so it is 1 plus 0.11 by 3 to the power 3 by 12 minus 1 whole into 12 is i 12 done okay is it okay now please write down when interest is paid continuously throughout the time period it is called force of interest when interest is paid continuously when interest is paid continuously throughout the time period it is called force of interest when interest is paid continuously throughout the time period it is called force of interest so now limit p tends to infinity what is p the frequency of compounding how many times compounding is being done in a year now the frequency of compounding is tending to infinity means the frequency of compounding is very often multiple times so limit p tends to infinity ip ip is delta delta is force of interest limit p tends to infinity ip is delta okay write down nominal rate of interest nominal rate of interest nominal rate of interest convertible every instant nominal rate of interest nominal rate of interest convertible every instant nominal rate of interest convertible every instant is force of interest is force of interest okay now i will show you the proof of accumulation and discounting factor when force of interest is given write down euler's rule euler's rule e u e u l e r s euler's rule euler's rule okay so what does euler's rule state what does euler's rule state limit n tends to infinity 1 plus x by n whole to the power n is e to the power x so this is what the rule says now we are going to start with 1 plus i is 1 plus i p by p whole to the power p after this after this uh, we are taking limits p tends to infinity on both sides we can take limits limit p tends to infinity on both sides so this is a constant because there is no p this is a constant there is no p so it will be 1 plus i only okay here it is limit p tends to infinity 1 plus i p by p whole to the power p now what you need to do is you need to compare this and this and tell the answer this so 1 plus i is one year accumulation factor now you need to compare and tell me the answer the answer will be e to the power i infinity and e to the power i infinity is delta so one year accumulation factor in case of force of interest is e raised to the power delta e raised to the power delta two years accumulation factor is e raised to the power 2 delta three years accumulation factor is e raised to the power 3 delta we haven't done anything this proof is this proof is not important what is important is this result this result this result says one year accumulation factor one year accumulation factor is what e raised to the power delta okay now i will again explain the proof for your satisfaction see euler's rule states limit n tends to infinity so n is what 
n is what p p is tending to infinity n is tending to infinity right 1 plus x x is this x is this by n by n by n to the power n by p to the power p so it's all the same thing and the answer is e to the power x so e to the power ip and what is the tending value for ip infinity so e to the power i infinity what is the tending value for p infinity so you replace p by infinity so it is e to the power i infinity which is e to the power delta so a 0 to n a yes so a 0 to n is e raised to the power delta n v 0 to n is e raised to the power minus delta n every instant like in share market you you buy a share at 90 the next instant you see the share is 91 so you get returns very quick very instant done so the present value is 500 delta is 8 percent t is 3 years you need to calculate the accumulated value so accumulated value is 500 e to the power 0 0.08 into 3. Next question is accumulated value is 800, t is 5 years, delta is 9%. So the present value is what? 800 e to the power minus 5 into 0 0.09. Please watch how to use calculator videos and those who haven't taken calculator, you'll find it very difficult to attend classes from tomorrow. Hmm? Please post the answers in online. Be very quick in response. Three. Five hundred and what is the first answer? Six three five point. What is the second answer? Done. You're given D is nine percent. You need to calculate I, D2, I, D2, I12, and delta. So D is 9%. So how to calculate I? I by 1 plus i is 0 0.09 so you solve for i from here then you do 1 minus 0 0.09 is 1 minus d2 by 2 square then you have calculated i so 1 plus i is 1 plus i 12 by 12 whole to the power 12 you have calculated i right so e raised to the power delta is 1 plus i so therefore taking log on both sides delta is ln 1 plus i in words it is delta d e l t a
please solve. Please solve. And after this, I'm giving you all a classwork and I'm giving you all 10 minutes of time. So I is 0 0.05. You need to calculate I2, I4, I12, delta, D, D2, D4 and D12. Okay, so there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 items for 5% that you need to calculate. Start solving.
दोस्तों ठीक है ये सब तो आप पहले इसमें चार पार्ट था ना आई डी टू आई ट्वेल्व और ये था ना एक एक मिनट रुको एक मिनट रुको पहले इसका लाइन से आंसर बताइए जीरो पॉइंट जीरो नाइन एट नाइन फिर जीरो पॉइंट जीरो नाइन टू वन फिर जीरो पॉइंट जीरो नाइन फोर सेवन फिर जीरो पॉइंट जीरो नाइन फोर थ्री अब इसके बाद उसका सारा आंसर बताओ पांच परसेंट का सारा आंसर बताओ आराम आराम से बोलना ठीक है I2 का बोलो I देखो तुम्हारा क्या है 0.05 पॉइंट जीरो फाइव है फिर बोलो आई टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फोर नाइन थ्री थ्री नाइन ठीक है फिर उसके बाद I4 का बोलो 0.049 पॉइंट जीरो फोर नाइन जीरो एट एट नाइन फिर बोलो I12 बोलो फिर बोलो डेल्टा बोलो जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फोर एट सेवन फिर इसके बाद डी का बोलो फिर उसके बाद डी टू बोलो फिर उसके बाद डी फोर बोलो 0.048493 पॉइंट जीरो फोर एट फोर नाइन थ्री डी ट्वेल्व बोलो जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फोर ठीक है अब मैं एक स्टेटमेंट लिख रहा हूं देखो कि वो सही है कि गलत है स्टेटमेंट ये सब लोग आया आंसर मैच किया स्टेटमेंट देखो D इज लेस देन D2 is less than D4 is less than D12 ठीक है ना is less than dot 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 is less than delta is less than dot 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 sorry हाँ I12 less than I4 less than I2 less than I चेक करो इसको पहले हाँ ठीक है नोट लिखो बेसिकली बोलने का मतलब क्या है ये जो मैंने लिखवाया है सर कैन यू सॉल्व फॉर डेल्टा एंड डी फोर ठीक है मैं सॉल्व कर दूंगा एक मिनट एक मिनट दोबारा लिखने दो उसको पहले वो क्या बोल रहा है डेल्टा के लिए सॉल्व करना है सो so, आई दिया हुआ अपने को कितना जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव सो डेल्टा इज वॉट एल एन वन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव सॉल्व कर लीजिए लॉग नेचुरल लॉग यूज करेंगे कभी भी लॉग नहीं यूज करेंगे एल यूज करेंगे ठीक है D4 के लिए सॉल्व करने बोल रहा है सो वन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव इज वन बाय वन माइनस डी फोर बाय फोर होल्ड टू दावर फोर ठीक है सो so, क्या हो जाएगा वन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव टू दावर माइनस वन बाय फोर वन माइनस दिस होल इन टू फोर इज वॉट डी फोर क्योंकि D4 फोर बाय फोर वन माइनस डी फोर बाय फोर होल्ड टू दावर फोर इज वन बाय वन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव ठीक है थोड़ा सा ये सब कैलकुलेशन क्या है दिमाग में फटाफट फटाफट बैठाओ इसके बाद में मैंने आपको क्या लिखा था स्टेटमेंट में डी इज लेस देन डी टू इज लेस देन डी फोर इज लेस देन डी ट्वेल्व इज लेस देन डेल्टा इज लेस देन आई ट्वेल्व इज लेस देन आई फोर इज लेस देन आई टू इज लेस देन आई अब नोट में लिखो नोट में लिखो नोट में लिखो सबसे पहला नोट में हम लोग को ये लिखना है सबसे पहला हम लोग को नोट में ये लिखना है आईपी का ग्राफ कैसा दिखता है आईपी का ग्राफ कुछ ऐसा दिखेगा ठीक है आईपी का ग्राफ ऐसा दिखेगा मतलब आप यहाँ पर पी बढ़ाइए और यहाँ पर आपका आएगा आईपी समझ रहे हैं ना अल्टीमेटली हो क्या रहे अल्टीमेटली हो क्या रहे समझ गया ना जैसे जैसे P बढ़ रहा है 
वैसे वैसे आईपी छोटा हो रहा है वही तो किए यहां पर ठीक है कॉपी करो इसको फटाफट ये पहला था दूसरा मैंने यहां पर टेन ट्वेंटी थर्टी फोर्टी फिफ्टी एक सर्टेन टाइम तक जा रहा है उसके बाद तो कंटिन्यूस हो जा रहा है ना तो डेल्टा हो जा रहा है बनाया ला ये वैसे इंस्टीट्यूट का मैट में भी दिया हुआ है ये दिया हुआ है आपका हाँ कम क्या होगा अब तो वो हो जाएगा ना एक सर्टेन टाइम के बाद अगर तुम देखेगा यहाँ पर यहाँ पर अगर तुम देखेगा तो इसमें और इसमें जितना गैप है इसमें और इसमें जितना गैप है इसमें और इसमें उतना गैप नहीं है इसमें उसमें उतना गैप नहीं है इसमें उसमें उतना गैप नहीं हाँ वही तो गैप कम होते रहे मतलब यहाँ पर तो मिल गया ना ठीक है ये सारा ग्राफ जो मैं बना रहा हूँ आपको इंस्टीट्यूट के मैट पर मिल जाएगा फिर दूसरा आपका डीपी का ग्राफ है जो उसका ठीक उल्टा है डीपी का जो ग्राफ है वो ऐसा बनता है ठीक है सो बेसिकली यहां पर क्या हो रहा है दिस इज बेसिकली डीपी ठीक है ना और यहां पर पी अब इसके बाद नोट में लिखो द ऑर्डर रिफ्लेक्स द ऑर्डर रिफ्लेक्स द ऑर्डर रिफ्लेक्स The order reflects how late interest is paid. The order reflects how late interest is paid. The order reflects how late interest is paid. Full stop. The order reflects how late the interest is paid. Full stop. For example, for example, D corresponds to D corresponds to interest paid immediately d responds to interest paid immediately and so requires a smaller payment amount than i this order reflects how late interest is paid full stop for example d corresponds to interest paid immediately and so requires a smaller payment amount than i and so requires a smaller payment amount smaller payment amount than i comma smaller payment amount than i which corresponds to interest paid in one year's time frame which corresponds to interest paid in one year time frame which corresponds to interest paid in one year's time frame ठीक है इसके बाद एवरी इंस्टेंट जो इंटरेस्ट पे हो रहा है हर छोटा छोटा सेकंड पे जो इंटरेस्ट पे हो रहा है एवरी एवरी हाँ ओके नाउ नेक्स्ट इंस्टीट्यूट मैट बैक क्वेश्चन लास्ट क्वेश्चन फॉर टुडे क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवन इंटरेस्ट रेट्स टॉपिक मैट बैक क्वेश्चन कैलकुलेट द अक्यूमुलेटेड वैल्यू आफ्टर सिक्स मंथ्स ऑफ एन इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑफ हंड्रेड एट टाइम जीरो using force of interest 5% so 100 e to the power 0.05 into 0.5 because half year rate of interest 5% convertible monthly so 100 1 plus 0.05 by 12 whole to the power 6 by 12 oh sorry because this is the factor for one month so to the power 6 months effective interest rate 5% So hundred one point zero five to the power six by twelve. So these three are the answers. These three are the answers. Now after this, they are asking explain why the answer obtained in one A is greater than in one C, because you already know the answer, right? Here it's delta, and here it's I. So I means what? The interest is paid at the last. So what they are asking is if All three are having five percent, so interest is compounded fastest at what delta, then months, then years. So the lowest accumulation we are going to get is in what part three. In delta we are getting faster accumulation. Now one more explanation that I want to provide to you all is that please look in blue. So if I is five percent, what is I? What is sorry? If annual effective is five percent, okay. Now the question is, 
if delta is 5% then what is i if delta is 5% then what is i e to the power 0 0.05 minus 1 then if if i 12 uh, is 5% then what is i so it is 1 point sorry 1 plus 0 0.05 by 12 whole to the power 12 minus 1 please solve and tell me the answers in both the cases you will see it is coming greater than 5 percent this indicates that the accumulation will be highest if it's delta then i 12 then i 4 then i 2 i am just finding an equivalent if delta is 5 percent then what is i if i 12 is 5 percent then what is i what is the answer 0 0.0512 something here 0 0.05 1 1 1 1 so you see it's highest it's little bit high and this is 5 percent only so if all three are 5 percent the fastest accumulation is in or the highest accumulation is in delta right then it is i12 maybe what is the comparison i20 or i uh, i20 or i10 i20 i50 or i20 i50 clear so if all are five percent then i50 is what basically the compounding is being done 50 times i20 compounding is being done 20 times i10 10 times i5 five times i2 two times and i only once okay yeah but if all three are same okay so that's it for the day okay thank you and you all can solve questions from institute mat back question till 4.7 okay till till 4.7 okay thank you all of you